In recent days, many strange events have occurred across mainland China, from UFO sightings that appeared for two consecutive days over Tianjin Airport, grounding dozens of flights, several fireballs fell from the sky in Fuzhou, Jiangxi, trailing strange black smoke, to a large black smoke ring in Tianjin's sky, and footage of an eight-meter-long water creature swimming in the Qiantang River. These occurrences have caused a stir among Chinese netizens. UFOs were seen in Tianjin for two consecutive days. After 8 p.m. on September 12th, abnormal activity was reported again at Tianjin Haiban Airport. No planes departed, and most inbound flights were either put on standby for alternate landings or were circling above. According to Fei Changjun statistics, no inbound or outbound flights took place at Tianjin Binhai Airport for one and a half hours, from 8.10 to 9.46 p.m. on the 12th. During this time, 18 flights had to make alternate landings. Tianjin Binhai Airport has not made a public statement, but its customer service indicated that for public safety reasons, more than a dozen flights were unable to land during the hour between 8 p.m. and 9 p.m. This marks the second consecutive day of flight delays at Tianjin Binhai Airport. On the night of the 11th, the airport experienced a major disruption, with many flights canceled or delayed. Several planes were forced to make alternate landings at airports in Beijing, Hebei, and other regions, affecting around 3,000 passengers. On the 12th, Tianjin Airport faced irregularities again. Although officials did not mention drones this time, many netizens captured UFO sightings over Tianjin once more. It had an outer circle that kept spinning around a point, with flashing lights in various colors, one Tianjin netizen described in a live broadcast. Another video showed a single flashing UFO in the sky, which was soon joined by two more, one flying in from the side and another from above. The three UFOs formed a triangle, with red light emitting from the center, seemingly creating a large UFO that quickly moved through the sky. A father and son captured an image of a flashing UFO hiding in the clouds. Look, it's spinning inside the clouds. There really are UFOs in this world. In the video, the child excitedly spoke to his father. I took a picture of a white cloud that looks like a UFO. It's flashing colorful lights, right? Look, something is spinning on it. The two lights are still spinning. Do you see it moving? Some netizens also photographed the UFO, which appeared to grow and shrink. One netizen questioned, if it's a drone, as the authorities claim, how big would it need to be at such a high altitude? The UFO sighting in Tianjin has sparked heated debates among Chinese netizens. One commented, last night I saw three of them, two flew away together and one stayed in place. It doesn't look like a star because stars don't move that fast. And it's not a plane since there's no sound. A netizen in Beijing claimed that fighter jets were scrambled in response to the UFO sightings. No wonder fighter jets took off from Yanking, Beijing around midnight on the 12th. I thought it was unusual because they usually train at noon or before 9 p.m., but last night it was 12 a.m. The netizen continued, There's a military airport in Yanking where they usually train, but last night at midnight, the sound of the jets was so loud it felt like they were flying right over my roof. Regarding the official claim that the UFOs were drones, one netizen remarked, Let me clarify. Civilian drones can't stay in the air for more than 40 minutes and can't fly near airports. Another commented, who would dare to do this? They'd be fined into bankruptcy. It's been two days and they haven't caught anyone yet? Some netizens mocked the official explanation. They say it's a drone? I just want to know where to buy one like that. Even if I spent all my money, I couldn't afford it. I just want to see it up close. Several fireballs fell from the sky in Fuzhou, Jiangxi, trailing strange black smoke. On September 11th, several unidentified fireballs fell from the sky over Fuzhou, Jiangxi, leaving behind strange black smoke. Many people witnessed the event, and the video sparked heated discussions. The video circulating online shows that around 5 p.m. that day, glowing spheres densely appeared in the sky above Fuzhou, trailing puffs of black smoke as they fell. When they neared the ground, it became clear that these were burning fireballs. The video uploader commented, 
Dozens of fireballs fell, but I only captured one. One netizen responded, It was definitely a fireball. I also saw it this afternoon. It was super bright, even with the sun still out. It was brighter than the sun. In response to this strange phenomenon, the Fuzhou Meteorological Bureau of Jiangxi stated on the 12th that no artificial rainfall enhancement operations were conducted by the local meteorological department at 5 or 6 p.m. on the 11th. The situation was not related to any artificial rainfall operations, and the exact cause remains unclear. On the evening of the 12th, other netizens also filmed several fireballs falling from the sky near the Fujian Guangdong border. The netizen who posted the video commented, I can't figure out what's sending these fireballs. As they fall, there are also sparks trailing below them. The video of the falling fireballs has sparked heated debates among Chinese netizens. Some speculated that it was a UFO, saying, I've always believed UFOs exist. Another added jokingly, I really believe KFC exists in the universe. A huge black circle appeared in the sky over Tianjin. Witnesses, it was still wriggling. A netizen posted a video on September 8th showing a massive, unidentified black circle in the sky over Tianjin. The circle lingered for a long time and seemed to be wriggling, sparking speculation among netizens. The video, which circulated online, showed a large black smoke ring slowly drifting in the air over Tianjin. Look at that! What is it? Shocking! The person filming exclaimed. Oh, it's still moving, I'm recording a video. Witness Ms. Du told the media, I was walking down the street when I suddenly noticed a huge black circle in the sky. It looked like an airflow wriggling. It was very large, obvious, and strange. The appearance of this enormous black circle in Tianjin sparked heated discussions online. Some netizens speculated that the mysterious black circle might have been a smoke ring produced by a fire-breathing show at a local theme park in Tianjin. However, the theme park responded, stating that while fire-breathing performances do create smoke rings, there had been no such performance on September 8th. Just three days after the appearance of the mysterious black circle, on September 11th, another unidentified flying object was spotted over Tianjin. Many witnesses posted related videos online, causing a sensation. Most netizens believed it to be a UFO. Some netizens bluntly commented, Tianjin is not peaceful. There are black smoke rings in the sky, and UFOs are harassing the airport, forcing flights to stop. These are bad omens. A water monster filmed in Chiantang River? Witness, it is seven or eight meters long. On the morning of September 12th, a Hangzhou resident filmed a water monster, about seven or eight meters long, swimming rapidly on the surface of the Chiantang River. The video sparked heated discussions online. The footage, which circulated widely, shows an unidentified object swimming at high speed on the river's surface partially visible and never revealing its full form. The person who filmed the video told the media that he and his friends were doing morning exercises by the Chiantang River when they suddenly noticed the unidentified object moving swiftly in the water. At first, they thought it was a remote-controlled toy. However, upon closer observation, they realized the object was circling near the bridge and swimming back and forth, resembling a large fish. They decided to film it, and post the video online. He described how the object first swam from the third bridge to the fourth bridge, then back to the third bridge. This unidentified object is about seven or eight meters long. It kept swimming in circles near the Chenjiang third bridge. My friend speculated it could be a finless porpoise. In response to the water monster sighting in the Chiantang River, a representative from the Hangzhou Agricultural Department stated that aquatic creatures wouldn't swim so quickly, and the finless porpoise is only a little over one meter long. He suggested that the object more likely resembled something like a remote-controlled boat. A spokesperson from the Hangzhou Transportation Department added that if the object was solid, it would pose an obstruction to navigation. The video of the water monster in the Chiantang River sparked lively debates among netizens on the same day. Some speculated it could be the legendary water monster, warning, 
don't go near it, or you might die. Others proposed it might be a remote-controlled fishing boat used by fishermen. However, some netizens pointed out that fishing boats of this type are usually no longer than one meter, whereas the water monster described by witnesses was seven or eight meters long, making it unlikely to be a fishing boat. One netizen reflected on the recent events, noting, first there were UFO sightings in Tianjin and Kangzhou, Hebei, and now a mysterious water monster in Hangzhou's Chiantang River. First the sky, now the water. What is going on? 44,000 shops. Shut down in China's price war, unpaid wages and economic uncertainty. 44,000 shops fallen. Low price coffee battle in China sparks wave of closures. More than 44,000 coffee shops have closed down. China's low price coffee battle triggers a wave of closures. This year, a surge of entrepreneurs entered the coffee market, leading to an increase in coffee shops and the beginning of a brutal shakeout. China's sluggish economy and consumer downgrade have affected the coffee industry. Major chain brands started a 9.9 .9 yuan low-price coffee battle this year, gaining significant market share. However, independent coffee shops that focus on medium to high price ranges couldn't afford to follow suit, resulting in a wave of closures. As of October 29, 2023, 44,000 coffee shops have closed across mainland China. The casualties of this consumer downgrade-induced coffee war are mainly independent coffee shops that target a price range of 20 to 30 yuan. According to 21st Century Business Herald, this year, leading chain coffee brands such as Luke King Coffee and Coffee Box kicked off a wave of 9.9 .9 yuan coffee battles. Although these big brands saw a decline in profits, their revenue surged, and they rapidly expanded their stores. Luke King Coffee's second quarter revenue and store count have surpassed Starbucks, making it the leading chain coffee brand in mainland China. According to Jujong TV, chain coffee brands offering coffee at 9.9 .9 yuan and 8.8 .8 yuan have taken over the market. In Hangzhou's Madukyo Road, there are both Luke Kin and numerous independent coffee shops. Some independent coffee shop owners complained, the 9.9 .9 yuan pricing is a bit outrageous, we can't lower our prices just because they're cheaper, we don't have the money, selling cheaper will only lead us to continuous losses. An independent coffee shop owner limited to Interface News, it's tough for me with Luke Kin and Coffee Box opening next to my shop. The owner mentioned that in May of this year, after Luke Kin and Coffee Box opened within 200 meters of their store, Luckin's opening directly caused their revenue to drop by 40% and Coffee Box's opening cut it in half. In response, they launched an 8.8 .8 yuan discount coupon, but they immediately began losing money. Many entrepreneurs with similar experiences cried out, my independent coffee shop is being killed by the 9.9 .9 yuan coffee. A Zaihangshu blogger named Bai Yuan Li Mei stated that she opened an independent coffee shop in Tianjin in May 2022, thinking that financial professionals have a habit of drinking coffee, so she chose a location near several big banks. However, she soon found that having the habit of drinking coffee doesn't mean having the habit of paying for it. Many people were already accustomed to buying 9.9 .9 yuan coffee from Luke Kin. While the density of coffee shops is increasing, the lifespan of new openings is getting shorter. Many new coffee shops, especially individual ones, often close within just two to three months of operation. Despite expectations, coffee shop operations are not smooth. The store has been losing money, and after three months, it announced closure and transfer. According to Dongda, the high density of coffee shops is a significant reason for their losses. Alibaba laid off 20,000 employees last year, former execs now deliver gigs. Alibaba laid off 20,000 employees last year, former execs now deliver gigs. Alibaba, the Chinese e-commerce behemoth, ruthlessly slashed its workforce by a staggering 20,000 employees in 2023, a move that adds to the mounting turmoil within the company. This morning, as Alibaba announced its fiscal third quarter earnings, it also declared a whopping $25 billion increase in its stock buyback program. 
The workforce at Alibaba shrunk to 219,260 individuals by the end of 2023, a significant drop from the nearly 240,000 employees it had at the close of 2022. Shockingly, Bloomberg reports that Alibaba axed a similar number of employees throughout 2022, as well. The brutal layoffs at Alibaba coincide with its efforts to offload several non-core businesses. Despite the turmoil, Alibaba managed to report earnings per share, excluding certain items, at $2.67 for the period, slightly surpassing analysts' expectations. Revenue also saw a modest 5% year-over-year increase, reaching $36.67 billion, exceeding analysts' estimates by $270 million. Amid China's economic slowdown, Alibaba's e-commerce sector is losing ground to competitors, particularly those offering cheaper alternatives like Pinduoduo by PDD Holdings. Additionally, Alibaba's cloud computing division saw only a marginal 3% year-over-year revenue increase, while EBITDA surged by 86% as Alibaba prioritized profitability. CEO Eddie Wu emphasized that Alibaba's main focus is reigniting growth in its core businesses, namely e-commerce and cloud computing. Wu pledged to inject more funds into enhancing customer experiences within the e-commerce sector. Despite these efforts, Alibaba's stock plummeted by 5% today and has remained relatively stagnant over the past month. Moreover, shares have plummeted nearly 30% over the past year, reflecting the mounting challenges and uncertainties surrounding the company's future. Shocking revelation inside the Chinese economy, GDP growth is only 0 to 1%. China's landscape is marred by the sight of homeless individuals strewn across its streets at night, long queues of jobless workers vying for scarce employment opportunities, and thousands rallying in protests demanding payment for overdue wages. Even the affluent and investors have joined the fray in recent months, protesting against encroachments on their rights. The Chinese stock market, in a staggering downturn, witnessed a historic plunge at year's end, signaling an alarming trajectory toward the imminent collapse of the CCP regime. Despite attempts by CCP leaders and state media to project confidence in China's economic prowess, economist Xu Qinggang has cast a shadow of doubt over these assertions. Su Qinggang, a distinguished figure in economics currently affiliated with esteemed institutions such as the Center for Chinese Economics and Institutions at Stanford University and Imperial College London, forewarns of a grim reality, China's economic growth, as measured by GDP, is poised to hover between 0 and 1 percent, with a looming financial crisis on the horizon. Speaking candidly during an interview, Su questioned the reliability of the Chinese Communist Party's official announcement of a 5.2% GDP growth for 2023. Citing alarming statistics, Su pointed to a stark rise in unemployment rates, particularly among the youth, with official reports indicating levels exceeding 20% and some economists' surveys suggesting rates surpassing 40%. Such stark unemployment figures are incongruent with the projected 5% economic growth. Moreover, Su highlighted declines in China's foreign trade and a slump in the real estate sector, a key pillar of the nation's GDP, casting further doubts on the credibility of the reported growth figures. Despite officials touting electric vehicles, batteries, and green energy as the new drivers of growth, Su argues that the combined value of these sectors pales in comparison to that of the real estate industry, representing only about 3% of total foreign trade. As such, he deems the official 5.2% economic growth figure unreliable. Drawing from various data sources, Su predicts that China's economic growth for 2023 is likely to hover close to zero, with the most plausible scenario slightly exceeding 0% but falling short of 1%. He attributes the economic challenges not to any single individual, but to systemic flaws within the CCP, warning of an impending large-scale crisis in the Chinese economy.